Hello. So over the weekend, we had a bunch of more previews. They're going to keep this steady going. It looks like four a day. So, you know, every few days we'll catch up and do some first takes. So yeah, this time we got the remainder of the character mini support kits, as well as four action cards that are going to be the set. Probably, I mean, maybe not the only four. We'll see when we get the next card number, I guess. We'll see how many assets there are, pretty much. But yeah, so first things first, we have some Sato support. We have Brutish Swagger. Now, this card, it, it's a second Haymaker at home from the character support, kind of. But uh, the, the, different part, the other parts of Haymaker this time, pretty much, compared to Oda's attack, the Pigeon Flock. And this is a little interesting. Because that top enhance, the draw card, it has to be the only one in your card pool. It's a little hard to play two copies of this in a turn. I mean, you can. You'll still get the stun two on the second enhance if that's live. So I wonder if people will 4x this or 3x this uh, more commonly. But yeah, pretty much, uh, it's pretty simple. If you can draw, find that one extra card, if your character has a draw one card on their face, or maybe you're a fire deck and you're packing the full 4x's of like latent skill and... Um, calling for backup. Then maybe you're interested in this card. It is it is a four speed mid, but so is Haymaker. Yeah, I think decks that can trigger this stun are going to be interested in trying it out. It's going to have its five dips, so it's going to have its competition, of course. And it does have to be your first attack, so... Well, it only has to be your first attack to draw the card. You are perfectly allowed to sort of debate your opponent into thinking you don't have these by playing other things first and then just later on... Oh, here it is, right, if you're drawing the two cards elsewhere through latent skill or whatever. Fury is an interesting keyword. Uh, these symbols, at least Earth and Fire, have a bunch of Fury lines. So yeah, I think this is certainly going to see some play. I don't know if it's going to be hyper common. It's kind of going to depend on if a deck that's running this gets hyper popular. But yeah, we can give that a nice three. Talented Baker. So free speed fam. Free spammable speed is good. Uh, uh, sort of obviously on a two diff, you know, we have a couple like things like ambush tactics that are a little more conditional than this. The, the nice thing about this one is that it doesn't depend on anything your opponent's doing. It's just always on. That said, you know, nervous habit hasn't seen a ton of play. Granted, it that that some of that's on its symbols, right? Due to what symbols it has, and a one is a cost, right? It, it is not quite free. If you have three nervous habits, you are actually going to kill yourself if you spam it all the time. <laughs> So yeah, but that, that's been kind of a fringe card. This should be a little bit more than that. Once again, you need to be able to guarantee that you're going to have the card draw. Uh, both Satos will. Both Satos will probably play this. They, the Sato response is pretty nice. Other decks, it'll be hit or miss. Kirishima will probably run it. It is not trivial to make space for things like this, though. You know, it's, it's very easy to look at cards in the vacuum and be like, oh yeah, we'll just slam four of this in every deck that draws cards. But then you realize, you know you're cutting your new training method or, or, you know, whatever for it to make space. And then you start thinking, yeah, maybe not, you know, maybe I just run to something like that. So yeah, I don't, you know, again, it'll be in some decks that can trigger it. It won't be in every deck that can trigger it, but it'll be in some of them and it'll be pretty good when it does show up. We'll give it a three. Black Hole Void is a card I am a little more down on. Certainly, if you're 13, it's, it's a nice little utility snipe. You may or may not run this if you're 13. You probably will. Uh, sort of depending on how you feel about your foundation answers. Like off of Void, you probably run this off of Air or you might be happy with your jolts. The discard enhance that takes a card out of your rival's hand. The fact that they only net lose a card if they start with four or more is really rough. Uh, it... Like, it's fine, right? Taking them from four cards to three can matter if you're playing a really long string. So if, but there's if there's a deck where that's the model and this is the five diff they want to run, that seems really niche to me. And really almost the best use for this is if you catch this when your opponent has one card in their hand and then you're replacing whatever the last thing they really wanted to hold on to is with something else like that. That mode's pretty good. But... Overall, you know, there's so much defensive card draw in the format right now. I don't think this card is bad, bad, but I... You would need, you know, a dedicated discard theme or something like that to start thinking about this card, I would think. Or your 13. I'm gonna, I'll give it a 2. It's 
It's not quite a coaster. It'll probably show up in something at some point, but it won't be a, a huge player. Can't escape me. We finally have some card draw negation that is sort of blanket. Anything that draws or adds a card to their hand, for as long as it's not from their character, you can blow this up to cancel it. That is a steep cost, you know, destroy cost for a cancel, but it is in line with Taiaki Fanatic. And yeah, you think about the stuff it can cancel. It can cancel double jab pummel, that's important. It can cancel a draw to passing the torch, a draw to frigid heat wave. It can obviously cancel the latent skills of the world. And if you're doing that, if you're hitting any of those, you're pretty happy to pay this cost. Uh, something like a struggling with studies, canceling that. So yeah, I think this card's going to be quite good. It is, as always, hard to find space. You know, two diff foundations with plus three mid blocks are a little tricky to fit into decks, but I think it will at least be in most sideboards on these symbols. So I think you're going to see this card a lot. I think I'm going to give it a four. Sudden Death Assault. This is an interesting one. So it's a pseudo 6 mid 5 with powerful 3, which is very okay. Um, it, it's not nothing crazy. You're probably... If you're just sort of lobbing this out there, it, they'll probably still block it anyway. But... Uh, Thinking off of chaos, you can use something like encouraging training partner to make that a little bit harder and interacts with stuff like that pretty nicely. The remove two momentum enhance, uh, certainly for this Shigaraki with his ability to generate momentum, this is certainly something he can spend it on. It's kind of interesting that this is a callback to an old card where when you did this, the attack sort of removed itself from the card pool. So you didn't have the attack anymore. You were just paying the two momentum to say like, nope, you're taking the six in that case. And that's just what this attack is doing. In this case, you're just doing the five and the attack's still there. They still have to deal with the attack. Powerful three is, is pretty extra. <laughs> How much momentum do you think you're going to have? I know some people have talked about Denki two with this card. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I... It's very much, it's sort of a build around me kind of card. You have to, this has to be sort of your main use for momentum. You have to probably be putting some stats on it to feel good about a six mid five base the rest of the time. It does have the low block. It is a chaos charge move, which could be relevant. Yeah, it's, I, I don't think this card is niche. I don't think it will see a ton of decks. But people are going to be trying this in things and seeing how they feel about it. Very, very, very hard card to rate. I'm just going to give it a 3, but it, it could be more of a 2.5. It, it could be something where it just never pans out, but it's kind of cool, you know? Next, we have nothing to see here. This is probably pretty close to that staple 1x unique status. Uh, certainly, if you are playing Fury Attacks and or a decent number of mid-attacks, you're very happy to have this card. This is this is sneaky. This is actually can be a lot of pressure. If you're in a death deck or something, you're running Evil Gates, you're doing other things to pressure their foundation count. Having to deal with this on top, where if they block, they're also going to destroy foundations, and you Evil Gaze your last attack, and you Shigaraki them last turn or something, if you Shigaraki one dot, or it's a Merciless Rush, you can actually really pressure someone's foundation count if, if you get this up and going and get the steady pressure on. So that mode of that card is sneaky powerful, and discard momentum for minus three speed is a, a pretty good rate. People are relatively happy to do cool student for effective minus two speed for a momentum. So yeah, I think, you know, again, barring if you just have lots of other momentum outlets already, this probably doesn't find space, but I think in a lot of cases, people are going to go ahead and slot one of these in their decks. Maybe not two, because it's not the greatest of blocks if it gets stuck in your hand or whatever. But yeah, this card's pretty good. Invisible Infiltration. So what does it take to get someone to play a card that has no traits? Uh, unless your Hagakure has Breaker 2. But it is not a range, it is not a charge, it is not a slam, it is not a punch or a kicker or anything. Uh, it is just has its abilities. And we've seen traits really drive a lot of card play rate right now. You know, some cards would see play if they had the right keyword traits. 
uh, I you think of there's a random card I this is a weird one to bring up but like pop off step is a card that has no traits and, and actually kind of interesting abilities but and some of it's the symbols too but like it, it's it's symbols aren't playing fury decks so uh, except for evil which isn't that competitive it's so, like that card just doesn't see play because of its trait situation and that's not quite that's not near as powerful as this though so invisible is very often going to be a three low six sometimes it's even going to be a three low seven on your four diff that's a pretty nice rate and it has the hardened lineup thing going on basically where you get to refresh one of your foundations functionally ready it you might even be able to unflip something in the process so i think pretty much any deck that's on the kind of a good stuff mode that doesn't need traits is going to be strongly considering this card the one downside is the plus two mid block might not be great you have to think about what sorts of flip costs you have but if if you don't need anything else in particular this probably goes right in. I, th I think certainly early on we're going to see a lot of this and then we'll see whether or not it filters out of decks over time, but I'm going to give this a 4. This card seems real, real good. Cheerleader, we saw this in the regional promo form. Again, I forget what the heck number I gave it back then. Yeah, the tricky part about this responsibility is that because it has that momentum cost, it doesn't really help you defend against a turn two string. But after that, it's pretty good. I could see you know, defensive water decks being very interested in this card if they feel good about their ability to get momentum. You know, maybe not exactly Asui, but some other types of water decks. Even something like the water Ojiros, right? You're, you're, you're doing these aggro turns and you want to have some kind of shield up. Being able to flash something is pretty good. The Hagakure first four makes lots of sense now. It, it will help that character say, no, 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 you don't just get to sit at seven. I'll put you at eight right now. And they might have a way to destroy Foundation and go back to seven anyway. But you get to build two in the process, which is pretty cool. Yeah, outside of Hagakure, I think this is going to see some play. I don't think it will be absolutely everywhere, but it will be in decks that feel good about their momentum generation. Again, just their momentum spenders have to... They have to not be momentum hungry. I think you're pretty happy to spend a momentum on this pretty much no matter what your other momentum spenders are unless you very particularly have some plan for it. So it's mostly just, you know, how do you feel about your poke game? Do you think it can land attacks? Do you feel like, you know, flashing something on turn three or four is going to be very helpful to your defense, that sort of thing. So I'll give it a three, but I think it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to win a lot of games. And we get into the action cards with Engine Trouble. Nice low block. Uh, that's probably what's going to get it into some decks. It is very similar to Erase for non-Eraser head characters, and we've seen decks spot play a copy or two of Erase sometimes. Some of that's Nightwatch related in a lot of cases, but you know, being able to just pull out an Erase out of your hand and take away a piece your opponent thought they were going to have and, and close the game out can be very valuable. And if your deck is also looking for some low blocks, you know, sliding a copy or two of this in could be pretty good. I would be somewhat surprised if anybody's 4xing this, but it, it'd be pretty cheeky if you did. <laughs> you know, if, if you're on a very particular aggro plan, you might, right? You would consider it if this is sort of your low block. Yeah, this will be around. It, it'll see some play here and there. Give it a three. Flex your might. Uh, people think this card is very cool. It is kind of cool. So you need to have... If you want to guarantee the first form, you probably want to have 7 or 8 damage attacks in your deck. Which, we'll see what's on these symbols by the time this is all said and done. I'm, I'm not even going to try to remember it all right now. But you're mainly, you're almost mainly hoping that they don't even have an attack at all in their hand. Would probably be the main hope. But even if you're whiffing on the form, this does sit in your card pool and do some stuff. You... It's sort of two modes, right? Either A, you have a lot of high damage attacks, and this is... You're sort of using this to, to cycle into trade one card for two cards, and... Question mark, like super ready, set, go, I guess, kind of. But it sits in your pool, so you might also have decks that want to count cards in the card pool, like Jiro, that might consider this. Yeah, it, 
it, it's hard to tell whether these decks will decide it's actually worth it in the end versus playing other options that they could be playing in those action slots, but I think there will be a, a deck or two that really use this card pretty well over time. And so I, I'd give it a three. It is kind of niche, but I, I think people, at least at first, are going to be sort of looking at this card when they're on these symbols and, and thinking about whether or not they can use it. But it's in competition with stuff like Nullify. So, longtime players would know there was a card like Revoke called named Revoke that negated and enhanced out of the hand. This is the much, much more costed version of Revoke. So, very importantly, this is very hard to use on offense. You don't want to use it early in the string because it's going to sit there and add to progressive difficulty. And if you try to use it late in the string, that three difficulty is going to matter. So unless you're some, like specifically Water Osprey or something where you're clearing your pool as you go, it's kind of tough to play this card on offense. And that was one of the best things Revoke did, was sort of close out games by negating a key defensive enhance. So this is a, a much more defensively skewed version of that effect. And if you want to cancel characters, it's going to cost you two momentum. It's interesting that it still can cancel characters. That's going to be something what people have to keep in mind when their opponent has two momentum. They'll think, okay, well, I know they have nullify, so my character's not safe here. But, yeah, it, it's hard to say... it. It's hard to imagine this not being impactful. It might end up living in sideboards a little bit more. It to, you know, only if there's a really key enhance you want to stop on defense, or even like, you know, and I'm going second situation, I'm going to have the extra card in my hand early, feel a little bit better about burning a card from my hand just to negate something. But yeah, people will certainly be gravitating to it early. We'll see how much. You know, like some of these other action cards, we'll see how much it sticks over time. But I think, I think overall, it, it's probably gonna, it's probably gonna swing a bunch of games. One of the key things a card like this can do, and a card like the next card we're gonna talk about can do, can can put your opponent in situations where they think you have, they have you dead, but you have the hand trap, and then you have the backswing and you win the game. And that is. Yeah, that's how you win games with action cards, basically, right? The last one can also do that. It's called Recovering Tide. And a little more subtle, this kind of just messes with their math. So if they think they have you dead, but you know that this is the second to last attack, you could say, oops, I actually have four more health. Now they have to account for it. They have to treat it almost like a super regen that can come out of your hand. It has a nice little anti-discard, too. I think this is going to sneakily steal a lot of games. Uh, maybe, probably not quite as many as Nullify, but people are going to try this card a little bit, the, the cheeky 1 or 2x, and it, it's going to swing games in a way, like Plus Ultra does this sometimes. Right, we've seen this. And people have to think about playing around recovery time. It's probably going to have a lot of value just to play one or two copies just to make your opponent think about it. But... I don't know about running a full four. That's kind of that'd be really, really hard committing to the like not dying and, and it'd be like putting super regens in your deck basically, except they come out of your hand and they don't add to your deadlock and etc. But yeah, I think this will certainly see play. It could end up being really, really, really common, but I think overall it'll it'll be like in in some very dedicated defensive decks and then in a handful of other decks that could even be pretty aggressive that are just looking for that trick to steal a game. And yeah, that'll do it for these 12 latest cards. Overall, pretty good batch of cards. I think the only one that's kind of a dud is the uh, Black Hole Void here. I don't see that getting a whole lot of traction, but the rest of them all at least interesting. Probably going to have some homes. Probably going to be pretty good when they have some homes. I think Infiltration and Nullify will probably have the biggest impact overall. Yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite card is out of these. I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to Lecture Might, Nullify, some of the other action cards especially. A lot of people excited about Infiltration. But yeah, see you next time. Have a good night.